Our company started in 1907. Uh, 1907 was, a, was an interesting year. It was called the Panic of 1907. And in 1907, that financial crisis uh, uh, really started uh, our, our modern banking system. One, the Federal Reserve was created in 1933. Not too far off from that, the FDIC was created. First National Bank of Ocultree, Texas, got their national char charter in 1907. This little bank in Ocultree, Texas, Ocultree does not exist anymore, started with $30,000 in capital. The Santa Fe Railroad came through, and it came through about eight miles north of where Ocultree, Texas was. And so what occurred was that uh, Gray, Oklahoma and Ocultree, Texas moved together to create what is current Perryton, Texas. Perryton is one of those towns that actually has a birthday. August the 22nd, of, of 1919 is when Perryton was actually originated. Well, we actually uh, uh, hauled our bank eight miles by steam engine. Now, supposedly, the word is, is that there was a cashier in that bank the whole time hauled by this big steam engine. It really, it was just a, a really big tractor is really what was pulling the thing. And I guess what they were doing, if somebody needed to make a deposit or get a loan, they'd pull the, they'd pull the, the building over. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how that worked, but that was the story back then. 1919, Perryton, Texas has started, and of course we changed our charter name. We're now First National Bank of Perryton, Texas. And about 1919 is when my great-grandfather, Benjamin Smith Ellis, joined the bank. Uh, he was a senior vice president and a director in 1919. Well, I'm gonna fast forward to 1929, which is a really pivotal year. Uh, obviously, that was when the Great Depression started. And the CEO at the bank at that time, his name was F.P. Rogers. And Mr. Rogers was a prominent farmer in Farnsworth, Texas. And I think he was probably a pretty good banker, but he made a drastic mistake in 1929. He went long into the stock market with bank assets. And of course, it just fell out of the bottom. And he was one of thousands of banks that were in trouble at about that point of time. And so what the federal regulators did, they came down to the bank and they said, if you guys can go out and find somebody to run this bank, we'll let it run open. But Mr. Rogers is gone. He is out of there. Well, one of the individuals that they reached out to was my grandfather, Carl Ellis, and he absolutely refused to do it. But in 1931, he changed his mind. And as a matter of fact, back here, I have a canceled stock certificate of the original shares that my grandfather bought in 1931 when he became uh, president of the bank. Well, he worked at that bank for 39 years. He just absolutely fell in love with the banking business. And uh, 1934, which is just an incredible time when you can imagine all these banks have failed, the economy's in the tank. He mortgages our farm and buys controlling interest in this, in this bank. I am the fourth generation, more than 80 years later, to run this bank. So I'm very, very, very fortunate uh, as a matter of what my, my grandfather started. Somewhere in, in World War II, our little bank in Perryton sold more war bonds than any bank in the state of Texas. The 50s come along and obviously here comes the heydays. Oil is discovered. The Texas Panhandle starts taking off and our bank starts taking off. It was decided that we wanted to expand our locations. And so in 1986, we bought the old Booker uh, Bank and Trust Company in Booker, Texas. We were really the only bank that even bid on this thing. And we bid $10,000 and we bought that bank. In 1988, we bought our Hereford location. It was First National Bank of Hereford. About two years later, we bought our location in Pampa. And then in 1993, we bought the old Texas Commerce Bank here in Amarillo. 1995 comes along. It was really a pivotal year for, for banking. Uh, one of the things that allowed you to consolidate all your banks. We had five banks in four markets. They all had to be run by themselves. They all had their own board of directors, their own books, and everything. There was not allowed to do branch banking. So we consolidated in 1995, and at that point, since we had uh, moved into a larger market, we changed our name, and our name was what it is today, First Bank Southwest. 
2001, we built our new building, this building that we're in right here. And that really catapulted us as well. It was really, really important for us to have a, a flagship bank up here in a really nice building. We switched our charter in 2005 and we became a state bank. Now, the only thing that we had to do our name was drop the NA off of our name and we were a state bank and we enjoy being a state bank since that time. 2006, we bought our last bank uh, and that was the old Western National Bank. It was belonged to the Wittenberg family. And that bank is located off 45th and Tecla. And so that's kind of uh, how we got here. You know, here's a little bank started with 30,000 in, in, uh, in, in total equity. In 1995, I think our assets were around 336 million, if I remember. And I think we had about 24 million in capital. When I got here in 2004, our assets were, uh, you know, approximately 450 million, and we probably had about 41 million in, in capital. And as of the end of uh, September, we were 926 million in assets and 88 million in, in, uh, in equity capital. Myself, my cousins, my uncles, my father, have always tried to bring this dream that my grandfather had and bring it to today. This is a company, at least as long as I'm here, we're not gonna change our identity. I'm very proud of who we are and how we got here.